Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and this is my channel where I talk about all the houseplant things. <laughs> Today I am so excited because we are going to be talking about my June favorites. Now, let me be transparent with you. I have already filmed this video and I went to edit the footage last night and my microphone was turned off and I was like, wow, <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> I was really frustrated and so I'm just gonna try to be as genuine as possible even though I've already said most of these things already but hopefully I'll have new things to say and it won't feel um, weird so let's just get into it because I think that these favorite videos are a really great way to round up everything from the month that I might have gotten questions on and things that just really stuck out to me so let's just get right into it first i want to talk about some new terracotta pots that i got because they're thrifted let me get them i went to a new thrift store and i got these gorgeous aged patinaed terracotta pots now i have terracotta pots that i've had for a significant amount of time and they just don't look like this and i don't know how exactly one achieves a look quite like this i mean that is just like remarkably beautiful so this really like is it for me? I love this look. Some people hate this look and think it's dirty. Um, I think that you can seal terracotta by soaking it in water or something like that so it doesn't do that. Google it. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna say that that's exactly how you do it. I actually forgot, but I do know that you can seal it somehow. Anyway, the point is, this basically is just like water deposits inside of the clay and like on the outside of the clay because the clay soaks in the water and then obviously there are deposits left over and that's what the patina is. So if you ever have the opportunity to thrift terracotta pots, I would highly suggest it because they're, I mean, they're cheap as it is, but I have noticed the price is rising a bit. So that is something to note. But at the end of the day, terracotta is still pretty much the most affordable pot that you can put your plants in. So I would highly suggest it. But these cost anywhere from 25 cents to $2. And I have all the way up to, I believe this bottom one, like these bottom four are six or seven inches. So I just really needed a lot of pots in the four to eight inch range. Typically that's what a lot of my plants are in. So instead of going and buying them new, I saw them at a thrift store and bada bing bada boom, I got my new pots. In these favorite videos, I try to do five plant and five plant things. So the first plant I wanna show you is my little Anthurium crystallinum. So this is particularly exciting because this is one of those plants that was sort of just like living, surviving, doing the bare minimum for a very long time. I got it and it was very, very tiny. So it has come a very long way, even before this leaf. So this is the newest leaf. Check her out. It is absolutely beautiful. I've seen crystallinums have a lot of different uh, variations. So some of them have like a wider leaf. Some of them have like a skinny leaf like mine. I'm not exactly sure why that is other than the fact that there are different variations even inside of the same type of plant. If you know anything about that, feel free to share your knowledge with us in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you guys about that. But yeah, this is my little Anthurium crystallinum. It's sitting in a pot from Annie's Pottery. I feel like I have shown this in the last couple of months, but I love this pot. It's very cute. I have another one in a similar size with a little bit different of a design, but this is the newest leaf that came out while it was living in my greenhouse cabinet. And my greenhouse cabinet, I've made a few videos about, and it's just the best thing that ever happened to my anthurium. My anthurium are all putting out new leaves, and the leaves look very healthy and big, and it's just exciting to see them finally doing something because I wasn't being the best anthurium mom that I could have been, you know? So it's nice to sort of get my act together and put them in an environment where they are really, really thriving. So yeah, I'm just really excited about this new leaf, and it kind of is proof to me that it's working and it was worth the investment to get the cabinet and I'm really like reaping the benefits with a leaf like this. So with that said, the greenhouse cabinet was definitely a top 10, top five contender, I mean, it's in the video, for my favorite items in June. That thing is, like number one, it is beautifully made. Like Ikea furniture sometimes can be a bit, I don't know, flat pack <laughs> but this does not look like it was a flat pack you know it looks really really nice it's a beautiful cabinet so i i highly suggest it i did hear a little 
bird, a little rumor that Ikea is going to be discontinuing the Mills bow. And if that's the case, I'm really gonna try to get my hands on one more. I don't know, because I feel like mine is already so full and I could put more in it, but I don't know. I don't wanna like have like an overkill situation where I just have like, you know, the Mills bow thing. I don't know, I don't know. But I heard that and I hope that that's not the case because a lot of people are loving this piece of furniture from Ikea. So hopefully if they do discontinue it, it's just because they have a better product, but we'll just have to see. It was really easy to weatherproof and set up. That was one of the things that was kind of preventing me from getting it, besides the fact that it was out of stock for so long, but I was just kind of nervous to take the plunge financially and because I think it's like $250 or something. I mean, it's not a cheap piece of furniture. It was a worthy investment. I'm really glad that I did that and my plants are very happy with it. So if you're even considering it, definitely put your like phone number in to get reminders or alerts when it comes back in stock because it's probably out of stock where you live because everybody's buying them. The next plant that I wanna talk about today is this begonia, which needs to be repotted very badly. It, uh, it's, it's like lost a lot of soil, but this is the soil that it came in when I bought it. But anyway, you can maybe see it better from the back. It's kind of following the light, but this begonia is just so pretty. And I kind of just want to highlight this begonia as a way to highlight all of my begonia because, well, I'm not going to show all of them, but this is the one I wanted to show you because I actually recently put it on this trellis. You can see I made this trellis in a video a couple years ago. It's just really nice and has held up super cute and super well. So if you are interested in making something like this, I will link that video down below and in the cards so that you can go check it out. But yeah, I mean, I just think that this plant looks really cute on it. The trellis was kind of sitting in a, in a random box for so long because I didn't have anything for it. And then I noticed that this begonia was flopping over a lot because it was growing, which was really exciting. And it's just really, really filled in since I bought it. Like when I bought it, it was a little sparse, like leggy, but something cool about begonia that I noticed, it's like really keen to branch out. Like if it puts out like a runner, I wouldn't call it a runner because I don't think begonias do that. But if it puts out like a particularly like empty stem, it will fill that in later or even now it might be having like little growth spikes on it. So if you are at all interested in begonia or you're not interested at all, I would suggest trying out a cane begonia because cane begonia are very simple to care for, very, very simple. They get a little soft and droopy when they're thirsty and you water them and they perk right back up. They're very hardy and they're very quick to bloom as well. I have a begonia lucerna that has bloomed for me every single year I've had it, which has been like, I think three or four years. I don't know if it'll bloom this year because it's had a lot of transition with the move. We will just have to see. Maybe this one will bloom. The next item that I want to show you is a bit more garden focused, but I figured that I would bring it out because this literally saved my life in June. Okay, so this is, oh, let me turn this around without knocking anything over. This is a hoop hoe and you can see it's like uh, empty in the middle and you have like a sharp blade right here very similar to an actual hoe except it's empty in the middle and it just makes weeding so so easy i have a very large flower bed in the front of my house if you watch my garden vlogs you saw me sort of do a transformation on it and it had so many weeds it was like actually shocking and offensive <laughs> but basically what i did is i got this out there and i just scraped the ground it's kind of like you're mopping like you just kind of like go back and forth with it on the ground it cuts off the weeds right at the roots and so it's just a lot easier to get rid of a lot of weeds at once. So I would highly recommend this if you have a lot of weeding to do, and then you can keep using it as the weeds come back, or you can spray it with whatever mixture you want to keep weeds away. I'm not sure, you know, if you wanna use chemicals or if you wanna do something more homemade, that's kind of your prerogative, but yeah, just a wonderful tool in the garden that completely revolutionized weeding for me. <laughs> the next plant is this philodendron Brazil. And this plant is so sweet. It brings back memories of my first house plants I ever had because one of my first house plants that I bought for myself was a philodendron in Brazil. And it was very similar in size to this one. And I would say it wasn't as beautiful though, but you know, my first one was of course very beautiful, but this one is particularly wonderful because of the variegation on these leaves, like the leaf, patterns are just insane. We even have some leaves over here that are like full neon green and just 
just amazing. We have basically like a half moon right here. I have this actually situated uh, on top of my balcony up here so that it can trail down eventually and I hope that it does that soon. But as you can see, it's still pretty small, all things considered, but it's still a big plant, you know what I mean? It's not a small plant. I paid $13.50 for this. Oh wait, no. Yeah, $13.98 for this. And I just think that's the best deal ever. And I just kind of forgot about philodendron in Brazil for a while. And I'm really glad that I got this to remind me of just like how beautiful like basic plants can be, you know? Cause this plant is so easily found, but I think it is so gorgeous. And I think that if you don't have one, you should definitely get one because they're very easy to care for and just so incredibly beautiful. All right, the next item I want to show you are these wall hooks. So anytime I show my plant collection, um, like in this room, I get questions about how I am suspending plants from the walls. So let me turn you real quick so you can see an example. Can you see those right there, those beautiful anthurium hanging up and they look like they're floating, right? They're not floating, they're just sitting on these wall hooks. So let me get a pot to demonstrate how they work. So you basically, you get a pot with a lip. It has to have a lip or else it will not work, which is kind of sad because you have to get like the most basic terracotta pots. And if you're like looking for like a super stylistic look, you might not be able to achieve that. But I think that like all terracotta, I mean, that's basically my aesthetic. If you follow me, you know, like most of my stuff is terracotta, so it works but you have to get a planter with a lip. So you basically stick this in just like that. And the hook on the bottom fits into the pot. It's like curved, fits into the pot under here. And then the pressure of the pot leaning up against this holds it into place. So basically your pot will lean a little bit like that because this will be flush against your wall. So it does lean out a little bit. So that's something that has like completely changed owning plants for me, like, or not owning plants, but like decorating with plants. Because for so long, I didn't really know how to decorate with plants. And I feel like I still don't really know how, and I'm working on it. You know, I'm learning how to integrate plants into my life without it looking like a storage bin or like a storage shelf of a ton of plants. I actually have somebody in mind that I'm gonna bring on my channel in a couple weeks to talk about how to design your house with houseplants, like how to do your decor with houseplants. And I'm so excited to talk to her because she has the best aesthetic and she just does this so well. So I'm excited to bring her on later, um, but for now. <laughs> the wall hooks, try them out, they're really awesome. And something to note about them, that exact wall hook that I just showed you is from Amazon. I haven't been able to find that exact product off of Amazon, although somebody from the UK did message me and say that they found them on eBay. So if you don't wanna support Amazon, maybe you can head over to eBay. But I will link down below some alternatives to this product that I found off of Amazon. Okay, do you remember in my video where I talked about plants I never talk about and there was a fifth plant and I was like, what is that fifth plant? I don't remember. Oh, well, we'll just do four. Well, here she is. <laughs> this is my Hoya Calistophylla and I, yeah, for some reason I completely forgot. I had it in my head. I wanted to put this in the video and then I forgot about it, which is, it makes sense with the title of that video, right? So this is a Hoya that I picked up from Tennessee Tropicals well over a year ago. I purchased it actually like while I was driving to visit family. I saw that they went on sale, so I was like, I have to go get this plant right now. So yeah, it just worked out pretty well for me in that. I think I paid like $70 at the time for it, but right now Tennessee Tropicals is selling them for I think $90 or something like that. So the price has gone up since I purchased it, but that's probably because it's gained in popularity and also plant prices in general just went up. These leaves are just so beautiful. I think that I love this Hoya specifically because it looks prehistoric, doesn't it? It just like looks so cool. This is the leaf that it put out right when I got it, this long, beautiful leaf. And it didn't do anything until this leaf came. You can see it's like a nice light green color. And I don't know how much bigger it's going to get. It is still soft, so it might still be working on some growth. But in any case, I feel like it could use the spot. It could use a spot in my Ikea greenhouse because it just hasn't been doing much. And I feel like when Hoyas have the optimal environment, tons of light, lots of humidity, 
they just do so much more. So I'm going to look into seeing if I can spare a spot for this one in there just to see what it does. But yeah, I never talk about this Hoya, but it is one of my favorites. I think that it's so beautiful and just, um, very reliable plant, I'll say that. <laughs> okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is fertilizer. And just in general, my soil mix with Tank's Green Stuff. So if you're not familiar, I did make a, a custom soil mix for houseplants with a company called Tank's Green Stuff located in Tucson, Arizona. So that's where I'm from. If you're super new here, I moved to Missouri um, nine months ago or so in October. And before that, I lived in Tucson. And then also one of their amazing products that I have absolutely fallen in love with is their super mix organic fertilizer. So I think that fertilizer is a really important and forgotten part of owning houseplants and it's something that I <laughs> neglect a lot, but fertilizing with this is so easy because all you do is take the correct measurement for your pot size. So it is a, it's not powder because it's organic. Like it's like a really, really fine soil. If I was to compare it to anything, it's not soil though. It's fertilizer. Cause it has like all of these ingredients, like a bunch of really amazing nutrients in here, but because it's organic, it's really, really gentle. So if you do happen to put too much, it's not going to affect your plant negatively. They have a really helpful measuring tool on their website so that you know, you know, a four inch pot will get a teaspoon, a, an eight inch pot will get a tablespoon. And all you do is scoop it out and just sprinkle it on top of the plant. And as you continue to water the plant, the fertilizer will trickle into the soil and just create a really wonderful uh, nutrient rich mix. It'll continue to replenish that mix. And actually my houseplant soil is mixed in with this stuff already. It's pre-fertilized. So yeah, I just really love it. I'm starting to see results from the last time I fertilized like a month or two ago. And it's just exciting to see my plants put out new growth and especially like healthy, big, full growth as well, because new growth is cool but like sometimes when it's small, it's kind of disappointing. And you know, when it's like a big new piece of growth, it's beautiful, it's, it's fun, right? I'm interrupting for just a moment because I just realized that I forgot to tell you that Tank Screen Stuff launched a web shop through their website, which is super exciting. So you can head over to their website, tankscreenstuff.com to shop for the De La Tanks houseplant mix, the super mix fertilizer that I just talked about, and a few other products. And then the last thing that I wanna show you guys today is my new Fitonia. <laughs> okay, I know that Fitonia is like one of those plants that not everybody loves. There's definitely some people who love to hate it, but I'm a person who loves to love it. <laughs> and also something funny about the Fitonia is I have a rule in my house that if I kill a plant, twice or three times, I'm done with it. I can't do it anymore. Like there's several plants that I just will never own again because of that, but the Fetonia just doesn't count, okay? I don't know why, but I will never not own a Fetonia. I've decided, I, ha I have to always have one because it is literally my favorite plant. It is the most beautiful plant. You cannot look at that and tell me that that is not absolutely gorgeous. And the thing is, I'm picky with my Fetonias, right? So this is the only type of Fetonia that I like. There's lots of other varieties that have like bigger leaves or like pink leaves or pink veins or whatever it is. And I don't like those ones. I only like this type. So I am a little bit selective, I will admit that. But at the same time, a Fetonia is beautiful. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to show you guys my new one that I got. All right, you guys, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed seeing some of my June favorites for plants and plant stuff. I love making these videos. I hope that you enjoyed. If you have any questions about anything that I show in my videos, go ahead and leave it down below. I will try to get you a link. I will try to see what I can do to tell you where I got it. Um, and it'll also help me decide what to talk about in my July favorites video. Cause I do want to do these on a monthly basis because I feel like it's good to do a roundup of some things that maybe I got questions about or things that really stuck out to me this month. Like I said earlier. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.